Um, some of the lessons that we've learned. Tunnels are less desirable than native. Uh, you know, tunnels are great in a lot of ways. I use a tunnel at home to, to provide V6 to my network. Um, whenever I travel, I have a tunnel that I can use for, to get V6. But when troubleshooting, especially with the path MTU discovery issues that we've seen, it makes them less desirable. Um, not all transit is equal, and this is kind of like the tunnel thing. Some ISPs don't do V6 as well as others, and it's really hard to know who does it well and who doesn't until you get their service. Uh, I'm not sure that I have a lot of good advice for how to pick an ISP that does good V6 other than to ask your friends, um, other people that maybe have traveled this road ahead of you, find out who does it well. Because you can find that they'll, they'll announce your, your network over V6 and nobody will be able to get to you for some reason. Uh, and that can be a real problem. Um, routing is not reliable. I think it's gotten a lot better in recent years, but it's still a problem. It's not, it's not the same as V4. Um, I think the V6 internet and the V6 routing table is maybe, I don't know, eight to 10 years behind the, the V4 routing table, um, at least in North America. I mean, I, a lot of us has come to rely on the V4 routing table as just being very stable and not shifting around as much. It's not, it's not the same on V6. Dual stack is really not so bad. Uh, we were afraid of it for a long time, um, either from security issues or just breaking things and bringing down V4 and V6 simultaneously, but it, it, it really works well. And we haven't had any security problems. Stability hasn't been an issue. And maybe that's because we had a lot of practice, uh, but I think also it's because it, it really does just work. You configure your devices and you can kind of forget about them. Uh, proxies, proxies are really good. Um, the Apache web server, which I'll talk about in a second, is makes a great proxy for transitioning old legacy HTTP servers that don't support v6 to ones that do and even using for those weird printers and other things that have web configuration uh, utilities you can proxy all of that and v6 enable all sorts of things that way um, people fear 4 byte ASN I, I put this in here because we use 4 byte ASs on several of our networks and we did this when we deployed the v6 networks and we can't find anybody to peer with us. Um, so I wanted to mention that in this slide, hoping that maybe people would come peer with us over 4-byte. We would like that. Uh, more lessons learned. Native support is better. This goes back to kind of the tunneling thing, but also so one, something that we've learned is when you set up tunnel interfaces, it's a different interface than your primary interface for, for getting out to the network. So just it adds configuration complexity to troubleshooting problems, whereas if it's native, Everything shows up on the physical interfaces that you would expect. There's no virtual interfaces or tunnel interfaces, and it just makes everything much easier. DHCP v6 is not well supported. Um, we're actually running it on this network. If you have Windows 7 or Windows Vista, it should be working for you. If you have any other OS, Mac, Linux, whatever, your OS doesn't support it, so you won't notice. Uh, that's something that really needs to change, and that affected greatly the way that we deployed v6 on our internal corporate network. Uh, reverse DNS is a pain. You can't do some of the neat generate things that you can with v4, at least not in bind. And I think that that support is coming, but it's not there yet. So reverse is, is very difficult if you have a really large network because you're going to be typing in lots of stuff or doing lots of cut, copying, you know, cutting and pasting. Um, Windows XP, this is something that we learned at our member meetings. It's kind of broken, but it's also really usable. It doesn't support DNS over IPv6, but it supports everything else. So you can dual stack a network and get XP talk boxes to talk v6, and it works really well, as long as you have v4 name servers for them to do lookups with. Um, it's really kind of interesting. Um, with that said, it's probably worth pointing out, to give Microsoft some, some credit, that Windows 7 and Windows Vista support v6 probably better than any other mainstream OS out there right now because of their support for DHCP v6. Um, it really works well. Bugging vendors does work. Um, We've been able to solicit vendors for support uh, across all kinds of different products. And they'll communicate back to us, tell us things are on the roadmaps, and usually support does start to appear. Um, vendors have been very interested in working with us to help them bring their products into parity for V4 and V6. Um, and you know, going to something that, that Owen said, yeah, they may use your network as a beta site a little bit. Um, but the payoff can kind of be worth it. If nothing else, it gives you something, a little bit of leverage when you go to negotiate those contracts or whatever. You can say, hey, you know, th this is a two-way street. Give us a break. Um, useful software. I really wanted to mention Apache Web Server. Uh, the mod rewrite and mod proxy are your friends. If you have any legacy apps that don't support v6, 
you can, and they're web-based, you can usually use Mod Proxy to make them work. And even if there's embedded IP address or other sort of session information in that URL, you can use Mod Rewrite to rewrite that in a way that makes the app work. I, it, it really, the possibilities are almost endless. It's really, really nice. Another tool is Six Tunnel. If you have some other device that doesn't work with V6, and it can be anything, TCP or UDP, you can make it work with, with Six Tunnel. As long as it's not embedding some sort of session state information in the packet payload, you can probably get Six Tunnel to work, and that includes things like SNMP and, and other stuff. Um, it may not be ideal, but if you have that weird oddball device that you just have to be able to V6 enable, you can use this to do it. And I also wanted to, to say something about so many different open source applications, you know, things like Wireshark and EtherApe, um, gosh, TCP dump. There's so many tools out there that you probably use today that they just work with V6, and they've worked with V6 for years, um, many of them since the 90s. And it, it's, it makes it really easy to transition. It's, uh, it was something that I really found surprising. Um, you didn't know it was there until you looked, but once you do, you're pleasantly surprised to find that the stuff that you've always used actually just works. Um, so today, we're standardized on dual stack. We've deployed it everywhere. Um, and we make an effort to try to deploy dual stack whenever we deploy anything. Um, that works really well for the most part on the network, on servers and hosts. Uh, in applications, it can be a little bit more problematic. Um, some specialized network equipment is difficult. Things like load balancers, we have some issues. Um, but again, vendor support has typically been good. They help us figure those kind of issues out. Um, we also uh, enable IPv6 by default on all services that we deploy. If we're working with the software engineering side of Aaron to de develop new applications, v6 is you know one of the first things we ask them. Does this work with v6? Will we, we be able to deploy this? And the answer is always yes. Um, we make the same requirement out of vendors that we talk to. Does your product support IPv6? We need this to work on IPv6 or I can't buy it from you. You know, granted, we're in a little bit different position than a lot of people, but it, it, it does work for us. Um, it may have, it, if anything, you know, it shortened the list of vendors that I have to deal with to some extent because some vendors, they just aren't there yet. But I think that those that aren't there yet, they want to do business with us. Uh, a lot of vendors want to be able to say that, you know, we work with Aaron and, you know, they're able to use us to do this or that. So they're, they're highly motivated, I think, to, uh, to, to, to try to work with us. So that requirement is good. And also, all requests for proposals that we put out have v6 as a requirement. So if we come to you for hosting or for transit or whatever, we're going to ask that you give us v6. And um, we've actually found that just about everybody will do that. Um, it's really not that hard. Um, the ISPs, certainly, just about all of them these days support v6 in, in some regard, at least the big ones. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Matt.